Hey, what's going on YouTube? Today I'm going to be showing you a hands-on setup and review of the Apeman C860 dash cam. I've installed this on my Range Rover Velar and I'm going to be showing you how I've connected all of the cables around the interior just so you can get an idea of how to set it up if you've uh, bought it yourself. I bought this for £100 on Amazon. Um, I'm going to quickly give you a quick guide on how I've set it up. And also I'm going to be showing you some clips of the dash cam recording from the front camera and the back camera. I've got recordings of the daytime viewing and nighttime viewing. So let's get started. Okay guys, so I've set up the main dash cam on the front here below the front mirror. I've connected the first wire, which is the charging USB port, and I'm going to be showing you how I've connected that. So the car is off and the dash cam is off as well at the same time. I've put this across, if you just have a quick look here, I've set the wire to come across the top panel here. And there's a little slot right at the top here. You won't be able to see because of the, uh, the, the sun outside. However, if you just feel your hands inside there, place the wire. The USB charging wire along the panels inside there you can push it in what I had to do I had to use a pen as well just to force it in there a little bit now it comes out from the sides here uh, you can push it in as much as you can until it sort of there's no more space to pull it in and obviously you have to come down and put the USB into the USB port for it to charge so this is the only wire that sticks out from the side here uh, which you can see is behind the steering wheel to the right now I've got it coming down the side of the door panel and I'm just going to show you by opening the door. Okay, you can see the wire is coming down along the side here. These grey things, they're the uh, sticky pads that come with the camera and I've uh, cut them into slices just to make it a little bit smaller and less visible. An alternative to this, you can use black cello tape and that should mask it really well. When you're coming in, uh, it doesn't really seem that noticeable to the driver um, or other people but coming down what I've done is I've connected the wire uh, with more tape uh, behind the panel just underneath the uh, section here which is under the steering wheel I've got tape underneath there in certain points you can see if I you can see a little gap in the panel there I've put it all along there and you can see it comes out at the end just there I've got a bit of sellotape there which I'm going to replace with some black sellotape uh, just to mask it a little bit. But there's another panel on the left of the driver's seat which you can stick it into and that goes right down inside there. So you can see it's gone in there. Now I've got that coming down along the left side of the driver's seat and that comes up here and I've got that going straight into the side compartment in the middle of the car and that goes into the USB port. Okay so from the passenger side I've connected this cable here on the left which is for the back camera. Now similarly this goes along the top here. These two wires do stick out a little bit to the sides but I can sort of deal with that. It depends on your personal preference if you think that doesn't look right. There's not really any other alternatives but that's the best you can do for now. I'll show you how it looks on the outside as well just to get your opinion. Again, similarly to the other side, there's a panel just above uh, the seat here at the top. You can uh, stick the wire just behind there. It goes along inside the panels here. And the same as the other side, as you can see over there, the wire will come out to the side here. Again, I've used the uh, sticky pads to make sure the wire is stuck towards the uh, plastic uh, side panel there. This time it's coming down and I've got it hidden underneath this panel here. So you can push this right underneath, but when you get to this point, it does come out. There's no way to stick it underneath unless you use a screwdriver or anything, but you don't want to damage the cable. So I've just left it like that. Again, it's not in any way stopping the person from tripping over the wire when they're entering the car or anything like that. And this is going down the side, around the back, so let me go to the back door. Okay, you see the wire coming in through there. Again, I've pushed it into the panel here, along the side here. 
Now on the back seat, just zoom in there. I've pushed it underneath the back seat here on the left. There is a gap that you can stick it in. And I've pushed it along inside the seat. Provided you don't really move the seat backward and forward that much, it should be okay. And I've pushed it further back into the side there. Now towards the end here, it does come up and it goes all the way up and I've just connected it to this hook that's on the top right. And then using a sticky pad, I've got it hooked up to the ceiling facing backwards just over here. Now this wire doesn't stick out that much because I've used the sticky pads which I've sliced into little rectangles, stuck them on the ceiling there and connected the back camera with that. It's not that visible, especially when you're driving. You can't really see it. It does a, a really good job. This is how it looks from the back seat to other passengers. It looks like a very small satellite navigation. Uh, but people can tell that it's a dash cam. It's not too much in your face. It's relatively compact. It does a really good job. And I'm going to show you how it looks like from the outside. Now when you're walking past the car on the outside, this is what it may look like. You can see, noticeably, it will be a camera to other passengers. They won't assume this is a sat nav only because you can see a lens at the end of that and uh, you can't really tell what's actually going on because there's no front recording light so it could be recording 24 7 or it could be recording via motion but anyone that's trying to damage your car or thinking about damaging your car or taking anything this may sort of put them off only because they are unsure what's actually recording or how much monitoring is in place which I think is really good now in terms of the wires that were sticking out to the sides they're not very noticeable when you're driving around other people can't really see it um, from the side view you do know something is there but again it's quite small people are not sure if it's a sat nav or a, or a dash cam but from the front you definitely know it's a dash cam and it could be recording. Now I have tinted windows in the back, privacy glass, so there's no way for anyone to see the back camera which is really good. Neither from the side you can't see that there is a camera in the back so that's even more of a benefit. Okay so just to quickly give you a run through of the menu items that you can find on the dash cam. There's a few buttons here on the right hand side on the top is the menu button you have up and down arrows and you have a confirm button which is a tick on the left hand side you have a power on which is on this side you have to hold that down for two seconds to power it on and two seconds to power it off and just a small little circle button above the power button on the left is a reset button so if you hold that down for about five seconds it will reset the device on the right hand side you have the SD card port there I have a 32 gigabyte mini SD in there one other thing to note, once it's recording, if you try to press the menu button, it will save that recording that was uh, previously happening to the emergency folder, which is in the SD card. That's in case to prevent anyone tampering with the device or anything like that. So you have to just wait for this SOS recording to finish, then you can enter the menu. Okay, so this is the menu. The first one is the resolution. If you have the back camera connected, as well as the front camera, you can't do more than 1080p at 30 frames per second for both of them. PIP stands for picture in picture, so I have both the back camera and the front camera displayed at all times when I'm driving the car. Five minutes I think is a good amount of time to have a recording on loop, so once it's recorded the first five minutes, the next five minutes it starts recording on top of it, so it saves you memory space on your SD card. Um, there's various different options. Exposure is the type of quality that you want on the uh, camera itself when uh, uh, driving in different lighting conditions. Don't forget to set up the uh, date and time as well so it tracks the exact time that events happen. Auto power off is one minute which is good. The last thing you want is to keep this on uh, for a lot longer and it drains the battery. WDR is the wide mode so when you've got the camera set with this on 
you can see a little bit more visibility on the road in front. Uh, it just makes a little, things a little bit more widescreen. Let's go to the next menu by pressing the menu button again. You've got the uh, driver fatigue alarm. I've set this to off. If you go into there, you have various options, one hour, two hours or four hours. This will alert you if you've been driving constantly for that amount of time and it just is a bit of a safety measure. But if you do long distance journeys, that might be useful. I've currently set it to off. It can remind you to turn your lights on. Uh, you've got motion detection. Now this is really useful. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. This is so that if you've got your car parked somewhere quite risky at night time, this will start recording clips if someone is in view of your camera on both the back and the front cameras. Motion detection is, is really useful if someone's trying to think about maybe damaging your car, scratching it, or even trying to steal something from the inside. This will catch everything. The last one, the G sensor sensitivity. This is really good. So when you have a collision with another car, this will detect that the car is shaken and I've set the sensitivity to high. So even the slightest of accidents, not a major one, it will still capture the last few minutes of the, the event and store that in an emergency folder inside the SD card, which cannot be deleted or overwritten. And that's really useful because you might need to send that to your insurance companies for claims and so on. Now, as you can see, the timer has come on, um, the car is off, so it's got that one minute time limit on there to power off itself, it saves battery. Although the motion detection is on, it will only record and start recording once somebody walks in front. So those are the main features. I hope you like that now let's have a look at some of the uh, quality on the clips okay guys so this first video I'm just driving away from the building you can see it's quite dark that's probably because the Sun is behind the building and I'm in a, a lot of shadow looking into the road it's a little bit dark still you can't see until the end of this road here because of the Sun being on the left hand side now I'm just coming around the bend, I'm going to be driving towards the sun. As you can see, it does make it a little bit harder to view on this particular clip. Now that's probably going to be a standard problem when you're always driving against the sunlight. Now you can also notice that the video seems a little bit blurry to me. Now it's a little bit fuzzy, I can't really make out some of the license plates. Now I think there's a reason why for that, because on my car I have a front windscreen uh, heater. Now with that you get black lines on the front windscreen and that is throughout the whole windscreen. What that does is basically heats up your windscreen in the winter when you have frost or ice on the windows. It just clears that away. Now because of that I think that's distorting the quality of the image a little bit as opposed to driving with windows with none of these uh, black lines in them for, for the heating. I think if you look at the houses on the left there, uh, even the traffic lights, the lampposts, it just makes the video a little bit more fuzzy. It's not as clear and as high definition as I thought it would be. I didn't know that this would be a problem when I first bought it. Just playing back the clip now, I can see that it does cause a little bit of blurriness on the videos. It's not crystal clear. But again, it is recording fairly well uh, with the sun directly into the eyes of the uh, lens for the dash cam. It does make it harder to see the license plate numbers for the cars in front. Now having a look at the back camera, it is pretty clear, especially when the sun is on the opposite side. I can see this Mercedes coming up behind me. The license plate can easily be read if I slow it down there's no issues there now the main purpose of this is to catch the license plates if there's ever any accident or anything like that and this is pretty much doing a really good job on that uh, from the back camera especially depending on the lighting or the type of weather condition outside it will do a good job for the front camera as well having said that I guess the bad point is that if it is sunny weather you can't really see uh, the license plates of the car in front of you from the front dash cam. Now that's a big issue because if someone has caused an accident in front of you, you can't capture it with any 
solid proof of the license plate number. Now let's have a look at the nighttime view and see how that looks. Okay, so this is the front dash cam driving at nighttime. As you can see, it's pretty clear the signs for the exits were not that clear. The signs on the roads, on the pavement, is, is pretty clear. Uh, they're very large. Now I have premium high definition LED headlights. They are causing a bit of a problem on the license plates because of the brightness of them. They're reflecting off of the license plates in the cars in front of me. Now, like this blue car here, as you can see, I can't see the license plate number. Neither can I see on the car to the left of it. I think it's a mix between having those black heated lines on my front windscreen and those really bright LED lights it's not allowing me to capture it so if I slow it down it's going to be very difficult for me to capture that now I'm not sure what the solution would be but I guess this would be a pretty bad point for the dash cam specifically on the camera quality I'd have to continue playing around with the brightness level that comes in the settings as I was showing you earlier now let's have a look at the back camera and see if that makes a bit of a difference and see the quality there. Okay, so this is the back cam. Now, it's a little bit dark. Again, it doesn't help that I have tinted windows. That does restrict the visibility a little bit. Although uh, the pur main purpose of this is to capture the accidents that do happen or if someone is coming up behind you and they crash into you, you have the proof of the crash. In terms of the license plate numbers, I'm finding it very hard to see them you, from the back camera specifically you can see that because of the headlights of the cars behind you that does restrict the camera's ability to actually see that license plate I'm looking at the cars on the left here queuing up I can't really make out this car because of my brake light I'm able to make out the license plate number and it seems to be fine on that part so if it does slow down you have your brake light on, I believe you can still view the license plate number there. This could be a bit of a hit and miss, so I wouldn't give it a solid 10 out of 10. I would say possibly this would be maybe 5 or 6 out of 10 at most. It does do the job for, for a £100 piece of equipment. So far I've only viewed clips a few times. I haven't really explored around on the uh, motion sensor or the parking monitoring just yet. But I will be looking at that further in the next few weeks. I hope you enjoyed the uh, setup and the hands-on review of the video quality. Let me know what you guys think, if you have any problems getting this up and running in your car or if you've got any questions in general then please do ask in the comments below. I'll leave a link in the description of the actual product I bought from Amazon. Otherwise give it a like, make sure to subscribe and I will see you guys next time.